Hi, welcome to our second episode on Chapter 12a. And in this episode, we're going to look at the structure of a nucleotide in a lot more detail than we did in Chapter 2. And we're specifically going to look at the nitrogenous bases on a nucleotide, and we're going to get to learn their names for the first time. But before we begin, let's look at the role of DNA. And what is the DNA's role in heredity in particular? Right? DNA makes up genes. And if you can remember what a gene is, a gene is the instructions for making one protein. So remember, it rhymes. One gene equals one protein. This segment of DNA has the instructions for making this particular protein. All right? Now, your textbook, if you look over here on page 342 of your textbook, or if you have the iPad version, it would be on page 581, it uses a book analogy. Now, we're all familiar with books, you know, back cover, front cover, stuff in the middle. And a book can do these three things. It can store information. The pages of a book contain information. You can copy a book. You can either copy it by hand or you can take it to a copier, and you will have the exact same information on that page as you did in the original. And then you can transmit the information in the book. In other words, you can hand the book to another person, and they can read it and learn the same stuff that you did. DNA can do all of this, okay? DNA stores information in cells. And remember, it's the information for making proteins. Fix that right there. It's actually an N. Okay, so it has the information for making proteins. It will copy itself. It will copy itself in a process called replication. We will be covering this in another series of screencasts coming up. And then you can transmit it when cells divide. So in other words, you pass on the genes to the next generation. Mm -hmm. So I really want to make sure that you look at this. 342 of your book, or if you have the iPad version, 581. They've got a picture that's going to explain this in a little bit better detail than what I can do here. All right, The picture's in your book. That's why I didn't put it on this, this slide. All right, the DNA nucleotide. If you can remember from Chapter 2, the DNA nucleotide is the monomer of a nucleic acid. And if you can remember, a monomer is the basic unit of a biomolecule. Okay, the DNA uh, nucleotide has three components. A phosphate group, a five-carbon sugar, and in this case, the five-carbon sugar is called deoxyribose. Deoxyribose is actually the D that's in DNA. And it's also going to have a nitrogenous base. Now, the nitrogenous base is going to be one of four. Adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Okay? Now, you can see here in this picture, the pentagon is the sugar. The phosphate group is this orange circle. And then these carbon rings represent the nitrogenous bases. Now, the nitrogenous bases come in two, two different types. One's with a single ring and one's with a double ring. The four different bases, as I said earlier, adenine and thymine, these two have a tendency to pair up, so that's why I put these two together. Uh, adenine is way too many letters to write, so we normally just write A. Same thing with thymine, too many letters to write. Normally just use a T. The other pair would be guanine, symboled as a G, and then cytosine, which is used the symbol as C. So A, T, C, and G. Those are your four DNA bases. Now the bases come in two groups, as we saw in the picture on the previous slide. They either have a single ring or a double ring. If you're a double ring, you're a purine, okay? Purines, best, great way to remember this, remember uh, the dog food company, Purina? Well, Purina is actually an agricultural company. They grow corn, they grow soybeans, and they stick it into the dog food, all right? So AG for agriculture, Purine for Purina. Remember, Purina is an agricultural company. Purines are A and G. And because it's a double, you need two bags, all right? So just remember, you need two bags of Purina dog food. And remember, Purina dog food is actually an agricultural company. So the two bases are A and G. They have a double ring. That's why I use the two bag. 
It's kind of a corny way to remember it. That's punny, get it? Agricultural company. But that one worked for me when I was your age. And it's, you know, I'm 44 years old, so I still remember it that way. The other bases only have a single ring, and these are called pyrimidines. Okay, so remember a pyramid, you know, it looks like this. Think of Egypt. Okay, now these have a single ring, and what we're going to do is we are going to cut down a single pyramid. Because when we learn about RNA, there's going to be a third base with the symbol of U. And I want to say that for a different one, okay? So if you remember, you cut down a single pyramid, those are your pyrimidines, because they have a single ring, all right? So here is adenine, just put an A over that one, and here's guanine. And look at there's one, two, two rings. Okay, here's thymine, and here's cytosine. And look, one ring in each of those, okay? So remember, Two bags of Purina, which is an agricultural company, cut down a single pyramid, and that's how you can remember your pyrimidines. All right, Chargoff's rules of base pairing. Chargoff was a gentleman who was studying DNA, uh, I think back in the 1940s, but don't quote me on that one, you know, 30s, 40s, or 50s, somewhere in that ballpark, okay? And what he discovered was is that if there was 20% adenine, then there was also 20% thymine. And he discovered if there was a, an amount of guanine that was, say, 60%, then it would be 60% cytosine. So Chargoff's rules are A pairs with T and C pairs with G. So Chargoff's rules of base pairing are A to T, C to G. Okay, I want you to repeat that a bunch of times because you need to remember this. A to T, C to G. A to T, C to G. All right, now I had a student of mine give me this little mnemonic device. It was, always, it was like this. Always together. Okay, take me a little while to write this up. And it was good couple. Okay, always together, good couple. As you can see here, A to T, C to G. Always together, good couple. A to T, C to G, A to T, C to G. You have to have that perfectly memorized because that is going to be, and we're going to come up with this information throughout the whole year. You have to remember these base pairing rules. Got to know it, got to know it, got to know it, got to know it, got to know it. All right, now, a purine will always pair with a pyrimidine. So in other words, a double ring will always pair with a single ring. Double ring with a single ring. All right, now this is, gonna, this is gonna end our screencast for this section. One more episode to go. We're gonna talk about Hershey, or I'm sorry, we're gonna talk about Watson and Crick in that one. So until next time, we have one more episode to go.